Good evening and welcome to Shady Grove Radio. I'm Dan Loggins, and this is episode number 15. And we have a return guest tonight. Pastor Jerry Lumston is here. And Jerry, remind uh, Pastor Jerry, remind us what your job is related to Shady Grove. I serve as the district superintendent for the North Carolina West District, and Shady Grove is uh, one of churches, uh, one of 104 churches in our district, and. Uh, specifically, one of my jobs is to work with churches during pastoral transitions to kind of partner with them in the process. I know there are a lot of questions as we go through this process, and it, and it is a process of finding a pastor, and it involves a lot of people, a lot of questions, and we're not going to answer all of them tonight, and there won't be answers, I guess, this week or next week, but as the process unfolds, We'll get more and more information, I'm sure. I know there's an announcement about reopening the church coming up, but before we get into any of that, let me just ask you a general question. And we, we really didn't cover this in our just our preliminary talk here um, just a few minutes ago before we came on the air. But talk to me a little bit about what it takes to be a pastor in today's culture. The board meeting that happened last night. Tell us what went on there. Sure, it was it was the uh, what we call the initial search meeting where we will introduce the process. Uh, the board also had to care for some uh, kind of interim transitional business. The congregation delegated the budget to the board. Uh, that's not something that's often done, but in times of pandemic, it's not really possible to have a church meeting where you go through that. And uh, so we had to work some on staffing details, pulpit supply, uh, how how things would be handled in the transition. And there was a good bit of time spent on reopening and how best to implement their, their Shady Grove. So it was uh, probably about half interim and transitional business for the operations of the church. And then we introduced uh, the search process and did some Q&A about that. Was was the meeting virtual or was it in person? It was in person. Uh, all of the board members but one were able to be there. We met in the, we, we had the virtual option, but had asked those that uh, could come to, to come. And all of the board members were able to be there. One had a conflict and would not be able to join us. Uh, that's that's outstanding representation to have a, a board that size and everybody be able to be there. That's actually unusual. They were very engaged, and uh, it was it was really good to meet with them. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that, that they would be that involved, that they would actually come to the church and, and uh, I won't say they risk their lives, but they certainly uh, took time out to drive over and time to um, – I don't know if you wore masks or not, but I'm sure you were, you know, sitting quite a bit of distance away from each other. And for them to do that, we just appreciate them doing that and being that involved with it. So who all was there? You said the local board and you, uh, Pastor Todd, was there? Yeah, Pastor Todd was there as well, uh, because he and I have been uh, just kind of in a volunteer role in the transition. We've been trying to work with the staff to coordinate things. The reopening piece is one of the more complicated things we've come across in years, and so we've been meeting with the staff for that, and so uh, we've been taking turns, so it was best for him to be there. A lot of times he will attend these times with me, so the two of us and then uh, the existing board, with the exception of the one that had the conflict, wasn't able to attend. Did you look at any resumes last night? We didn't look specifically at resumes. We we created the communication piece of where we'll house those and how the board will access those. We did talk in generalities about, uh, so it's not always just resumes. Sometimes somebody will call and they will be interested, or the board has the ability to, say, pursue someone whose ministry they've seen. So we were able to have conversations about two or three people. The The actual search was posted. It's been up earlier this week, and uh, uh, some resumes have come in. And so when those come in, we tend to uh, put those together, Pastor Todd and I, and say, you know, here's the resumes. These people look like they meet the qualifications that you're looking for. The others are available. Uh, for instance, in, in our 
denominations, sometimes you'll have someone who just started studying for the ministry who has never pastored who will send a resume in. So we let the board know that that came in, but we'd say, you know, we, we this probably wouldn't be somebody you would be interested in. But they they have access to all that came in along with any information that we have to share about them. And so they'll start, uh, we'll set that portal and that uh, communication up where they'll have access to that just in the next uh, couple, three days as they're coming in. So I know as attenders, as, as members, as people who are part of Shady Grove, we don't have access to those resumes, but can we go take a look at the post for the, for the uh, position? Sure. Uh, that link is on, if you go to wesleyan.org, and um, then there's a, a, a place that says resources, a tab, and you go down to jobs and it's posted there. Uh, or I can make the link available there. We made it available to uh, to some. It's. I, I would say that the the attraction is the church and its strength and its history. And so uh, when when I first started doing this, we would try to write these perfect job openings. Now we we just say here's here's what's featured. So for instance, we put a link to the church's website, another link that would tell maybe a pastor in a, a place not close by uh, a good link to what the triad, you know, some of the opportunities and things that the triad are available in the triad. So it's it's open information. And as we move forward, the process will be very open to folks. Uh, uh, for instance, the board will communicate, you know, here, we've met and this is what we're looking at. We usually are not making the people open. For instance, let's say a pastor feels like maybe God's stirring their heart to come to Shady Grove, but they, they, they really don't know. So they send a resume to begin the process of just searching. Well, if that resume gets out there and we've had this happen, people would go on their page and uh, look at a sermon and then post it for other people. And the next thing you know, you know, just imagine you had a pastor that was very popular at Shady Grove and some of your folks were on social media and another church said, hey, we're asking this pastor to come here. And even if the pastor hadn't sent a resume, the, the you know, the the division, the, the things that would follow would be difficult. So that's why the people aren't involved. Now, once the board's ready to present someone to the church for consideration because it's the church's decision, they'll have extensive information, things like that available. So... Tell me, are, is the church on track then, or is this process, I know we just started, but uh, are we on track with this? Oh, I think I think very much so. The board's very engaged. Um, we're, you know, they've, they've got the process. Several on the board have been through the search before, so uh, sometimes when I go to a church, they haven't done it in a long time, and the process is very confusing, so we were able to to be able to dig a little deeper about uh, how do we, you know, what needs are presented right now at the church and what kind of candidate would match those. Where in the church that hadn't done a search in a while, it'd be much more process oriented about here are the steps. So uh, I I feel like probably uh, the board's already ahead of the game as as far as understanding, grasping the process. Uh, working together. They'll meet again in a couple of weeks for their regularly scheduled board meeting. The vice chairman leads those pastor search sessions. We're available to attend or to zoom in if needed to help in any way, but uh, it's not something that we're a part of all those because it's, you know, the church is working on what they think's best for them. How long was the meeting last night? Uh Probably a couple of hours. I think there was an item or two of business. We we tend to leave after we've done that, so uh, the board can talk about next steps as far as when they're going to meet and and things like that. So I can't speak to how long it lasted after we left, but I think uh, we were there. It's it a little over a couple of hours. Now, in fairness, we had to handle again budgets, uh, some transitional business, reopening things like that that would not be part of a normal search. So. Normally, those meetings, the search process is an hour to an hour and a half, and uh, it was at, at least that much, that part, with the board last night. And so who is who is running the church now? Well, we'd hope the Lord's running the church, but uh, he, 
Absolutely. We are working. <laughs> maybe I, I hope that was the right answer. <laughs> I, I should retract that question, maybe. But go on. Yeah. So uh, the staff will be the staff and the board work together, and that's that's part of what we were working through last night. Uh, the the staff has been very responsive, eager to help. They've been very uh, keyed in on the reopening plan and other needs, and so. Pastor Todd and I have kind of alternated some meeting with the staff. I, I don't know if that would be a long-term thing, but trying to make sure that we get that connection piece. And then the board and the staff work together. The vice chairman and the board work primarily on the search. The staff is not involved in the search piece. They're they're informed, but generally speaking, we don't have staff as part of the search. That would be, you know, people like in a business saying, we're going to go hire the person who will be leading us. But they're very much informed. So staff is running day-to-day -day operations. They're very engaged. The board provides oversight and coordination. And then we try to be there as resource people when, let's say, a situation comes up that might be unusual. We want to be able to you know, come in and help in any way we can. It sounds like the weight of this primarily is on the board and then some on the staff and then the role of the attenders and the people is to pray and support and uh, continue to to encourage staff and and our local board correct the board the weight of the search is primarily on the board uh the weight of operation would be primarily on the staff and and the board uh helps provide kind of they provide the kind of the the guidelines, the boundaries that staff operates within that, and and uh, there's good communication. The staff had great updates they shared with the board, so I'm really encouraged to see the communication back and forth and how they're working together. And that's not always the case, so the church should be thankful for that really good connection. So when is the next meeting? What what do we hope to accomplish in the next meeting? So I believe it. Uh, I, I want to say it's two weeks from last night. I believe they meet the second Tuesday. I, I, I can't be positive of that, but I'm I'm 90 percent sure because that's something they would have decided. Uh, we asked the board during the search before they leave, decide what steps do we have to take for the next meeting? When will we meet again? And who's responsible to to carry those things out. And those were some of the things that we left with them as we left. But uh, so I, I think it would be whatever that second Tuesday in August is. Uh, and I guess one of the key uh, events or one of the key things that happened is the election of the vice chair of the board. Can you give us some information on that? Sure. The, the board uh, had re elected it. We, that's an annual election. The vice chair is chosen from among the board members. And it, all each member that is a, a member of the board is eligible for that. And the board elected uh, Scott Crotty to uh, serve in that role. He's been serving that role the past couple of years. And so he would be serving as the vice chairman. He's also the uh, spiritual formation director for the church, uh, which is a lay role. And we have just a few minutes left. So I'll ask one more thing about that vice chair job. So his job is to... He'll be chairing those meetings, and Correct. what else is he involved in as vice chair? So a lot of the communication piece with, uh, with let's say that they're at the point of bringing somebody in for an interview, maybe even on site, generally the first step would be uh, we're going to make some communication, do some video interviews. But the vice chair is communicating with that person. We really encourage the board to not – put all of that on the vice chair. There are some steps, for instance, you know, somebody might say, well, I'll make the necessary reservations. I'll help set up the schedule, you know, so that person can meet with staff. But the vice chairman is uh, making sure that all of that's taken care of, that is coordinated. They don't have to do it themselves, but they say, uh, well, somebody's coming in for, uh, let's say when you ultimately get somebody's coming in for an interview and then to preach, they're going to be coordinating that weekend uh, with the pastor. They're going to be making some of the calls. We, uh, When there are references, we encourage uh, other members of the board, so they will be helping out with all that. So it's a team effort, but it's led by the vice chair. Well, it sounds like overall that we're making good progress. I know we're early in the process, right. and we do have to deal with with the COVID situation. 
And uh, I just say I appreciate your leadership. You and Todd have really put a lot of time in. I know you have over 100 churches that you deal with, and so that means, I guess, over uh, well over 100 pastors that you have to deal with, and you're fielding texts and phone calls and all of that, even, not from Shady Grove, but from all these other churches. So we just appreciate the energy and the time that you guys have put into uh, helping us at Shady Grove and giving us some leadership there. Well, we we want to do whatever we can to help. This is the most important decision the church makes uh, is the leader that they'll choose. And so our job is to resource, make sure they're aware of the process, help where there's any uh, questions, things like that, and, and provide the, you know, uh, some of the candidates. And, and we're happy to do that. We have uh, we've had about seven churches open. We've been able to fill two or three of those. It's very it's it's a different dynamic with COVID. Uh, fewer people are are really opening to moving or open to moving. Uh, for instance, somebody's spouse has a job in this economy. Do you want to pick up and move somewhere? And so it's it's been a challenging season as far as that goes. Uh, I think Shady Grove is such a strong church and has such a good reputation. There, there already are, and there will be people who have an interest in serving. So it will be up to the board to work together, and they will involve the congregation, I believe, through prayer and informing them, so that it will seem like a you know the community is searching together and to bring in the next pastor. Pastor Jerry Lumston, thank you for joining us. You're the district superintendent of North Carolina West District of the Wesleyan Church, and that's where Shady Grove falls. And we sure appreciate you taking the time to join us this morning or this evening. Thank you, thank you Dan. Thanks for providing this. And uh, we continue to pray for the church and, and believe that the Lord's going to supply the right person. That's it for Shady Grove Radio this evening. I'm Dan Loggins. You know, our the technical director, our technical producer is Tanisha Patrick, and she works hard to make sure this gets on the air and posted in a timely manner, and we appreciate her work. Join us next week, and we'll have another program for you.